What's up YouTube, Kratos here and welcome back to another PSO2 video. So in today's video we're actually going to be running some ultimate quests. I'm actually going to do another ultimate quest and chill video. But it's a little bit special, a little different. We're actually going to be running jet boots only. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a tree. I already went ahead and bought an extra tree. It was painful, I really don't want one, but hey, you do it for the content. You think for the content, man. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tree together with you guys. I'm also going to toss the tree that I'm going to be using in the video description below. I already have it planned out. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to call this chat boots only. Bam. We have our jet boots only tree, of course. And I'm use I usually use the arrow keys for this stuff. So because it's a little faster for me. Uh, okay, cool. So we know we need three points there to start. We know we need to pick these up. These don't cost points, so they're pretty self-explanatory. Make sure we're not getting too much overlap here. Just that really quick. All right, dope. So like I said, I already have this planned out. We're actually going to do something that I'm going to recommend you not do. Also, in case anyone's curious, we're playing Bouncer Hunter today. We're not going to be playing Bouncer fighter under any circumstances on any day because i like surviving I feel like that's a jab at people that like bouncer fighter dude if you're good enough to play bouncer fighter more on you do it up but i'm going to do something that i usually recommend people don't do and again if you're playing bouncer fighter maybe you do this maybe you don't do this but you know teaches their own i suppose Actually, this has more use on Bouncer Fire than anything else. But people keep asking, and the people have asked previously, why don't you touch Elemental Burst? Like, how bad is this? So first off, it's because it's 5 points for a 20% activation rate. Now, granted, there is a 13 star in Episode 5 content um, that will allow you to always get this activation proc. However, right now, these points, it's 5 points. 1 point, of course, for 10%, but 5 points for a 20% chance, which is pretty bad um i'm gonna go ahead and take it only because those five points would be used like in melee power up which technically i feel like is still worth more in my opinion <laughs> um but it doesn't make a huge difference to me overall anyway so i'm gonna take them just so you can see how it works i personally have never taken it before i'm gonna take one point in a perfect gain recovery also something i don't normally take but i have the point and getting a point to melee power isn't gonna make much of a difference so We've got that tree taken care of. Our subtree is going to be our automate subtree, just so you guys get an idea of it. Here's what we're going to be using. We take one point in iron will. We take the full points in automate. We take everything in fury stance because eventually crit's going to be useful anyway, so I really don't care. Um, three points in power, melee power one and two, seven in melee power three, and then two points in sidestep plus. The reason we didn't touch it in the bouncer tree was because, like I mentioned in previous videos, these do not stack. Or at least it's been in my experience they don't stack. Also make sure you change what tree you're using. We're switching this over to jet boots only. And we're switching this over to our automate tree. We also need to create a sub palette to use for this. We're going to destroy this sub palette because we only have two books of sub palettes. So this is our, I really should turn this into like a jet boots only sub palette, but I play both weapons so often like the two of them together, that both of these pallets being available is kind of important to me. So I feel like it's just, just remove this from here. Actually, this might be playable. Hang on. Hmm. If I like remove this from here and remove or put this, Maybe put this in the same spot. This is just me thinking about how I actually play this. And then put both the activations. Because we're going to need crit and we'll need elemental. And then put that switch strike there. It has access to both, yeah. That pretty much is everything we need in reality. Other than these two here and break stance. We don't have break stance anywhere. But like... Nothing we fight is really going to need break stance and what we're going for. So we're just going to leave this as is because of the content we're doing. And I don't really want to mess around with this too terribly much. 
which makes it nice and easy. So the, the skills we're gonna be ha we're gonna be using here for casting and changing our elements, we just have Foy, Barda, Gizonde, because Gizonde is busted, um, Sazan, just because I'm used to the way the skill works itself, Medjid, Ill Grants. I actually don't know if this is the best choice here, to be honest. I just don't know light spells that well. I don't mess with them that often. So, I mean, Grants maybe, Ill Grants maybe. It's tough to say exactly what would be the best choice, but uh, let me see. How much does Ill Grants in this cost? 25 versus how much does this cost? 20. Maybe we'll just use Grants. I want to keep the cost of the spell relatively low just because I'm not using it for damage. I'm using it for changing of elements. Sazon is 18 versus Zon being 18 as well. That's why I kept it, so it's not a big deal. I think it's charge time is also not reflected here. Yeah, it's not reflecting its charge time, so that's fine. We'll leave this as is, and this will be a decent tree for us to use, or a decent, decent setup for us to use. Um, we, oh, this was me testing something out earlier today. Don't need any of this like this. We're not going to be using any soaring blades. It's just going to be jet boots. So one thing you can do actually is put multiple copies of your jet boots here, and then actually make all six of them your jet boots, and just set an element to each one in this slot here. That way you can just swap jet boots and it has all the elements available there. That's actually, I mean, if I played jet boots only, that would be what I did. Since you only really need one weapon, but you could equip it six times in different slots, or at least five minimum, because you there might be an element you really just don't need, right? So Oh, that's right. Thanks, man. Thanks for reminding me that I can't trust people when it comes to symbol arts. Okay. So before Things get real bad. Let's just hit the personal corners for a second really quick. Yeah, symbol arts, dude. That's how you guys doing? Hopefully every... Well, all right then. Someone from my alliance came into my room and dropped something off. Why, thank you. If you're in my alliance and that was you, nice. Appreciate it. I might open back up. So when I was playing on JP mostly, I had a specific room that I had set aside just for people to drop stuff in if they wanted to. I guess I'll put grants here too. Um, just people to put stuff down, you know, you could drop a poster down or if there was something cool or if you had like a symbol art you wanted to show off. Um, granted, I trusted my subs and my viewers a bit more than I do the general public. Uh, chat notifications. Do not display. Let's get that taken care of. Awesome. But uh, I trusted you guys a little bit more, so those weren't too terribly bad. Let's head over to the cafe and see if we can find a party for Ultimate Lilipo. That's what we'll be running today. So of course we're doing this because of the uh, of the recent video we released where we were talking about just jet boots. Let's look for an ultimate quest, Ultimate Lilipo. Actually, that's not bad at all. Perfect. We got into an 11 to 12, so 12 of 12 now. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and just jump into this, play a little bit of uh, Jet Boots, give you guys a little bit of a taste of how I play Jet Boots itself. Now, this weapon I do have, out of Bouncers, two weapons I have the least amount of experience in it. So I will do my best, but, uh, you know, no promises. Uh, we'll leave our boosters on. Shift to drink. So some people have asked, you know, how I have so much damage, how I have so much attack and things of that sort. So let me go over my gear with you guys really quick. I'm using a Nemesis Shoes. These are affixed with melee power reason I use them is because of the shield on them. This potential, so it only tells you it increases damage by 17% and forms a barrier to reduce damage taken at set intervals. It reduces your damage taken by 40%. Um, it happens one time and then the shield breaks and won't be up for 30 seconds. The shield also cuts the amount of PP that you use for your abilities, I believe, by 20%. So it's pretty nice. Um, here you can see my actual stats overall with the weapon equipped. The way that gets accomplished is a couple of things. Attack up large. Um, from the drink effect, attack up from the tree, my actual overall stats, my units that I'm using, just so you guys are aware in case you haven't seen the video where I actually fixed these, there are a full set of ray units, 65 melee power, 50 HP and 11 PP. I personally valued the HP over the extra melee power, so that's where I went. And the rings that I'm using at the moment, um, the kick and tackle ring, if you were just playing jet boots, you can get away with just using the jet boots tech arts short charge ring, which makes it so you Charge attack faster after you use APA. Um, you just have to make sure you fo you uh, you combo those. So you do need to actually make sure you hit that perfect attack ring to get the effect of the ring itself. 
But since I use both weapons, I use the combo ring, the two of them together. And in this case, I'm using the enhanced attack ring just because it's something that I had. It increases your normal attack damage. Um, normally, I do use the adrenaline ring, but since I'm playing jet boots, you pretty much have access to your PAs or to your buffs almost all the time. So I feel like it's kind of a waste. Oh, this tree definitely uses automate. So let me let me not forget to pick up trimates and diamates and uh, also feed my mag which I had someone ask in the comments as well. I'll answer because I didn't answer in that comment itself, but I have my mag set as stealth so you can't actually see it. So that should cover all of the questions I usually get. And we're gonna pop these. I don't see where the actual group is. Okay, no, I see them on the map. So how are you guys doing? Hopefully everyone's doing all right. Wow, walk in, get hit already. Mm, wow, there's nothing. Literally everything died. So cool thing, even though I didn't actually cast that tech, like I mentioned in one of the videos, just the act of charging the tech provides you focus, and the fact that it provided you focus is what gave you the, uh, oh shoot, lost my train of thought there for a second. The act of it provides you focus is what gives you the actual element swap. course it's code disaster it's good old fan dash bits i will always refer to this boss as anga by the way just because that's how i know him oh really that kind of is annoying where are people Uh, so one thing I did notice, and I mean, so I don't mind this, by the way, guys, just as a heads up. I know some people have asked and person in the comments that did this. Don't take this as like a bad thing or anything along those lines. So if you guys have any recommendations or anything along the, or anything like that you want to provide me, um, any questions, anything you want me to review or take a look at. Of course, you can always wait till I'm live because I do plan on streaming this weekend when I get off work or my days off. I'm sorry from work. You can always do that if you want to. Now, granted. If you send me something on stream, we're going to review it on stream together, right? So, like, just as a heads up, if you don't want that to happen, don't send it to me while I'm on stream. Um, but that is how that's going to go. Oh, see, this map has... Does it have, like, the... Yeah, it, does, it has the route around, dude. Why are we not up there? This map is, like, the best. Just stay... If you guys get this map while you're doing this... So, ultimate quest, by the way. Small little, uh off-topic portion here hang on a second but ultimate quest by the way every time dude every time but the idea is to farm as much of the ultimate quest as possible by the way so like you don't really want to leave you want to keep farming so you really just kind of go in a giant circle and spawn as much of this boss as you can and here is the downside. Actually, this boss specifically is the downside to using a single weapon. Because he resists weapons and elements and things of that sort. If he takes too much damage from one thing. Oh, and that killed me. I think I'm the only one over here. See, like, that's why I usually go with the Iron Will setup on these runs. is just because uh, most of these big, atta big attacks are going to kill me anyway. I'm just going to use Escape Doll because he's down. No one's actually paying attention to rezzing at the moment. They're just concerned with getting damage, and I don't blame them personally. Pop our buff. But you really just want to go in a giant circle, by the way, and just kill everything. And as far as, like, using a single weapon being a bad idea, this is literally that situation now. So, right now, Anga is resistant to my jet boots, meaning I do one-fourth of my regular damage. I do believe he's the only monster in the game that does this, so if you're not dealing with content where you fight this guy, it's not that big a deal. There are certain quests that have multipliers that are weak to something and not weak to other things. So it's always good to have other weapons that you use, but, you know, that's a problem for me at the moment.
right, cool. Yeah, change our element back, and he, he are, we are still the resistant weapon, unfortunately, so our kicks are not going to do very much damage. We're actually doing very little damage. Ideally, we would swap weapons at this point. Uh, he's going to swing, and I want to stay as super high in the air as possible. Uh, okay. Actually, this didn't work out the way I wanted it to. There we go. Okay, we step that. Thank, <laughs> thank you. So I honestly feel like playing jet boots without rapid strike up doesn't really feel that great. So I've had this comment pop up a couple of times. Why play both weapons? What's the benefit of playing both weapons? And honestly, it's your uh, it's your cooldowns. It's whenever jet sweep or not jet sweep. I'm sorry. Whenever um, rapid boost is up. Usually Photon Blade Fever isn't, and vice versa. You basically just use one until the cooldown is completed. And then you swap to the other weapon. So, honestly, it just works out better that way. It kind of sucks, because Bouncer does have a lot of investment in all their weapons, unlike classes like Hunter where you can literally put like a point in and you get full use out of the weapon itself. Or like fighter where you put like two points in and that's pretty much all you need. But the weapons do play fairly different, so you have to keep that in mind. We're mostly just gonna be using elemental stance to be honest. There's not really a lot that we have to worry about for break stance, so it's nice. But break stance is important to actually pick up on jet boots, by the way. I know some people like you can just go elemental stance since you're able to switch, you know, elements all the time, but you still like break stance is still a more damaging, it still has a higher multiplier for a stance. So when break stance is applicable, you use it. It's just whenever break stance isn't applicable, you switch over to uh to elemental stance. I see now why uh why we're not on the thing all the time, unfortunately. It feels bad. So we're just going to be cleaning up these mobs over and over again. Nothing too big, nothing too complicated. Just clearing mobs out. You guys can get an idea of how I usually... Oh, well, I thought I was going to be able to gap close to this guy. But uh, how I usually deal with, uh, with large packs of mobs. And again, I mostly like to have access to more weapons, but... Playing Jet Boots is kind of nice, actually, because they're really strong as someone who played Soaring Blades for a really long time. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm going to do that. Just clipped out of nowhere, and that's with 1,100 HP. Do I not have Dimates on me and Trimates? I use all those? No, I do have Dimates. Okay. And our RDR dropped. We're just going to pop that again real quick. No biggie there. We're going to jump into this cluster, which is not a good idea. Yep, I was kind of expecting that to happen. This is kind of what I also meant when people were, or when I always heard the recommendation. Well, you know, jet boots are very, very offensive. You can kind of just check attacks and you'll be fine. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. But uh, in a complete cluster like that was, dude, good luck. <laughs> like, it just proved good luck. If it was a boss fight, it'd be a bit different. Like, you can usually tell when attacks are coming towards you. And even, in some cases, some of the bosses in PSO2 kind of do suck. Um, with, uh, with just randomly clipping you out of nowhere. Occasionally, you have certain things you know for a fact that you dodged or that you might have guarded or you might have, uh, you might have parried that you just didn't get the parry from, which feels really bad. We've all been there. So moments like this is why I enjoy Soaring Blades, because I can literally attack from over top of the enemy and be completely safe. So those moments are pretty nice. I'm trying to think. There wasn't really a whole lot I wanted to go over, to be honest. This was mostly just like, you know, something to do. I wanted to get some content out to you guys, give you a little bit of Soaring Blades, or a little bit of uh, Jet Boots content, because I know people ask for it. 
I'm not really the best Jet Boots player, to be perfectly honest. I just get away with a little bit here and there. I was actually very anti Jet Boots for a very long time, man. I'm gonna pull these all together and. Ah, that kick felt nice. Just because of how unfair Jet Sweep Kick feels sometimes. Yeah, PBF does a ton of damage, but uh, outside of Photon... And PBF stands for Photon Blade Fever, by the way. PBF does a ton of damage, but outside of PBF, Jet Boots feel pretty... Or not about Jet Boots, but uh, Soaring Blades feel pretty lackluster. Just really not that great. You know what I haven't really noticed? The elemental explosions. We took the points, right? I'm pretty sure we took five points in it. Let's make sure. Sorry, I had to cut out a sneeze there for you guys. Uh, class in front. Nope. Uh, where was it? Where does this pop up? I don't think it. Does this show up in information? No, those are set effects. That information. Class info. Boats on art, technique, fuse tech, class skills. Here we go. Do we take tech explosions? Yeah, elemental burst. Triggers an effect when a status element uh, canceled. Element stored in your jet boots. All right. So, when the element cancel stored in your jet boots. You know, I wonder how does that affect. Um, wow, thanks for kidding me instantaneously. I think that might have just proc there, honestly. Oh, PSE burst, guys. Yay. I hate Zero Fun Doggo. But, uh... Honestly, I don't really notice the expl the explosions. Oh, also, I think this guy is the one who messes with your, uh... With your sound, this annoying cracking noise. I think it might be a bug. So if you guys have experienced that, you know, super fun does mess with my recordings a little bit, unfortunately. So if you guys are hearing that, I apologize. There's really nothing I can do about it. It just happens on this dude. And he would have to be the one person you really want to farm. Oh, uh, could you, like, have left that down for me a little longer? Yeah, so this is the thing. Honestly, whenever I'm dealing with, like... Fighting tons and tons of adds. I don't even worry too much about swapping my element all the time. Because it doesn't make a he... Oh, let me rephrase it. It is actually a pretty big damage bonus. Let me let me not get that incorrect here. I know people get all kinds of bent out of shape about that. But... In the grand scheme of things... You kill things just about as fast. Oh god, that's actually really... Oh, people are dead. See, that didn't count. So beforehand, I mentioned that Soaring Blades has... Uh, or not Soaring Blades, but Jet... Lovely. I love you, Blight Round. Um, that Jet Boots has uh, guard frames on the beginning of their... Uh, on the beginning of their PAs, right? So... It's supposed to happen also when, it come, when you uh, are Jet Sweep kicking. So you're getting the kick off for Jet Sweep Kick. And whenever you're doing shift actions, basically... Oh, don't tell me he's weak to my weapon. Oh, he is resistant to my weapon. Awesome. But you're supposed to get guard frames there, which I did cancel my jet sweep kick a little earlier than I usually would, trying to get that frame up, and... It does look like it is a guard frame and not full invulnerability, because it didn't work and make me invulnerable to the flash, as it should have, as other invulnerability skills would. It looks like it just, uh... Just made me guard up front. And we actually got a Gix drop. What was that Gix drop? It's a Gix double saber. Funny enough, I was thinking about trying Fighter next as the class that we uh that we cover on the channel. So that might have just saved me some money. I think these are actually extremely cheap, if I remember correctly. So that might not have saved me any money whatsoever, to be honest. So in this case, I should be using Break Stance, so we're going to turn that on here really quick. 
because these are breakable. At least I believe they're breakable targets. Also going to turn off break stance now, switch back over, and we're going to hit everything around us. So we're going to swap over. Oh, okay. Well, try to get a jet, try to sneak in a jet sweep kick here. Oh, great. Metal Guru Ramon, love it. So we activated a PA while he was going for the swipe, gave us guard frames in front of us, so he wasn't able to deal damage to us. I locked onto the wrong target completely. I think he has aggro on us. He does. Going to get a foe way off really quick, just so I can change my element to deal a bit more damage to him. Everything is close together. We'll drop a jet sweep kick while everything is stacked. We've got a lock on him, and let's see if we can take him down. He's going to go for an attack there, yep. And there he goes. So, not too terribly bad. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Honestly, there hasn't been a whole lot of information in this video. There wasn't a whole lot I wanted to talk about. It was mostly just showcasing off a couple of things. Some people have sent me some videos about their gameplay, and I've uh, done a little mini analysis here and there. So I don't mind doing that occasionally. I can't say I can do it for everyone, so I'm not telling you, hey, go out, record some content, and I'll take a look at what you're doing. But I know some people have been really, really confused about like their damage, like what they're doing wrong, so on and so forth. I mean, feel free to uh, toss me a link to uh, see your skill tree you're using, maybe. Uh, the builds you're running, I mean, maybe how you're playing if you have app, if you have the opportunity to uh, record your gameplay. I'd be more than happy to take a look and see what's going on. But small things to keep in mind, little small tips you can get. Perfect attack everything. Do not skip out on perfect attacks. It's very important for damage. The only, the only class that gets away with not perfect attacking things is freaking summoner, dude. Oh, that's not going to do anything. Dude, it always feels really bad when you go for a jet sweep kick and there's nothing around. Or, like, the target dies or it jumps back or something like that. And you just don't get any damage for that jet sweep kick, dude. Feels really bad. Yeah, all right. But, yeah, perfect attack. Pretty much everything. Eventually, you get a rhythm for it. And if you don't have a perfect attack up, you get used to uh, dodging. You'll notice I step into a lot of my attacks because it gives me a perfect attack window. Maybe step attack really quick or something along those lines. Step out of an action early. One that's, oh, okay, whoops. One that's fairly common is I'll step out of this and go into a, uh, a jet sweep kick, but as you guys can see, um, I got wrecked for it. Even with 1100 HP, you still die sometimes. Quick little tap of Mediverse with an attack out of it. Fairly easy to get our HP back up. You don't need to fully charge it. Uh, well, I gotta remember my hotkeys. This is a little bit different for me since I'm not using it. As you guys can see, I do switch sub palettes that I use when I switch weapons. I'm gonna do this, try to step out of it, and then get a jet sweep kick. Uh, we did get hit, but we took reduced damage because we have our nemesis shield up. Gonna get out of dodge for a second and reassess what we're looking at. <laughs> I'm gonna take that hit and almost die for it. Try to get away for a second, drop a Mediverse, weapon action for a moment just to. Uh, get the iframes for it, set up a jet sweep kick. Our timing was actually pretty solid that time. Thought our timing was going to be a bit off. I think we might be out of mates, so I'm going to pop our inventory open and teleport. And uh, get out of dodge. Yeah, we are definitely out of mates. There's no way we're not. That's kind of one of the reasons I like running the Iron Will build when I do these. It's just because I don't like to have to restock and I can deal with, you know, having to... Uh, 
having to essentially heal myself occasionally when I take damage. But having that one-shot protection a bit more is really, really nice. Oh, I was already healed up. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. But yeah, that's really about all there is to, uh, to jet boots, honestly. I mean, it's a fairly offensive weapon. You've got a lot of tools to move. You have a lot of tools to, uh, to attack with. You have all the elements at your disposal at all times, as long as you have an ability for it. Now, granted, the way we're playing this, we're only, only we're only using techs to, uh, to change our element, but there are builds later on that people will use or that you can use. Um, I'm going to jump down here. Actually, I would normally not even bother with this. But you are there are builds you can use that take more advantage of techs, but techs right now don't have crafts. And by crafts, I mean basically there's something that makes techs stronger by adjusting the way they work. And we currently don't have those in the game right now. So it's really not that useful for classes outside of force to use text that much. All right, cool, took care of that. And up here, but yeah, so that's really why we don't worry too much about it. When classes like, uh, like fighters have become more normalized, will mostly be around the time we have defensive options with our weapons, things like self heal. Um, they're super special abilities that are super, super useful that we'll get later on. Actually, the funny thing, funny enough, um, it was mentioned in a video that, you know, fighter sub isn't really that useful until we have access to a S5 ability. What that person was referring to was a super special ability that you get for weapons. Yes, that is the name for it, super special ability, SSA. I'm sure they're gonna use a different name on the North American servers or something like that, but that is the name for it on the JP servers. But uh, the SSA actually gives you the effect of one of the 14 stars. And that 14 star just makes it so the tech explosions happen all the time, so. It gives you that effect with also giving you a really good weapon, so. It's really, really nice. You can also have things like Life Leech and all that kind of jazz on it. But outside of those things, you really don't need, or sorry, you really don't have access to what you need to play it that much. And you can still get the full effect of playing Jet Boost, to be perfectly honest. Um, just going with Striking Setup. You're still playing jet boots. I couldn't even see my character there for a moment, guys. Like, I legitimately didn't know where I was. I'm going to get D-band back up because it's not. And then... Wow, everything just went Red Sea on me, dude. It was all parted. Right when I went for that jet sweep kick, we're going to get out of that. <laughs> I'm going to try to get that back up. And then read where Metal Guru Mon's going to be. get out of that if we can we did not feels bad but hey it's something oh we're going to i feel like he's okay he's not coming down towards me i was like i feel like he might be coming down towards me because i think i have threat on him which i do <laughs> feels bad man i'm being lasered and shot you ever feel like everything's trying to kill you dude it's because it is go ahead and change our element again because we hit our weapon action into neutral twice, which gets rid of our elements. Now, if I was playing really try hard, I would have uh, switched into break stance to. Oh, almost missed that. Switch into break stance to uh, to break his face, but I just can't be bothered to swap around right now. I'm just not used to my current uh, my current keybind setup that I'm using at the moment. But usually you want to have access to your break stance. You want to have access to both of your stances. You want to have access to everything you basically need. If you're playing jet boots only, most definitely, I would say... Oh, hang on. Let me see if I can res these guys without getting killed. Nope, someone else already got it. Perfect. But I would say do the whole uh, have multiple of the same jet boots on your pallets and use your actual sub pallet for your stances and all those other good things that you probably are going to need. Things like having Medjiverse on your sub palette is going to be super useful. Things like having uh, Anti on your sub palette is something that I would recommend. Xanverse isn't really needed. You can actually just get away with even in situations where you want to have a Xanverse down. Like in some fights when you're soloing, you'll actually find, and you'll probably see me do this by um, by instinct alone because I used to do this a lot whenever I was playing Jet Boots, um, would be 
even on a single target, do this. Step backwards and immediately go into a jet sweep kick. It's just something I'm used to doing because I did it a lot whenever I was doing solo runs of things like... Uh, Sorry, trying to think. I want to use the actual names, it's not abbreviations, because people just don't know the abbreviations. Uh, I'm not thinking, dude, I'm totally running a blank. PD is what I'm thinking of at the moment. And I'll, re I'll remember the name at some point. Profound Darkness, that's it. That's the dude. But it's a boss we don't have yet. He's definitely aggroed on me right now. <laughs> that was midair and jet boots are resisted. Which feels kind of bad. And the downside of playing one weapon. Especially in stuff like this. Now granted, this isn't really a big issue for a lot of other content. Because not very many bosses do this. I mean, again, there's some fights where there is a mechanic that your weapons get resisted. Like there's one specifically solo boss in episode 4 that her first phase she resists the weapon or her, her second phase she resists the weapon you use in your first phase or that you used mostly in your first phase i think there's like a damage threshold basically so basically it encourages you to switch weapons perfect but um yeah that did 40k damage that actually feels really bad That's so terrible, dude. 2k attacks. Yeah, like, you're really not helping much of anyone like this. I would have... We would have very much killed this sooner had I even using Soaring Blades along with it. And then, of course, you can also have the argument of just bring a, um... Oh, that's... Oh! Okay, we got out of that. Let me see if I can res these guys. Oh, there we go. But uh, you always have the argument you can bring a gun blade with you, which you absolutely can, or a gun slash if you're used to playing JP. But um, I found most of the time gun slashes, if you're not playing fighter, deal about the same damage as your weapon um, resisted most of the time. And it's also a weapon you're probably not used to using very often, so it's just doesn't do very good. But yeah. Well, this recording has been going on for a little over 30 minutes. I did say I want to do about 30 minutes of this recording itself, so we're pretty much going to call it there. Not exactly the best showing. Like I mentioned, I'm not the best with this weapon. Not honestly very good at all. Um, but uh, it does give you guys a bit of an idea of what to work with, what you're doing. We're just going to go ahead and quit out of here. If I can menu properly. Yeah, quest and abandon quest. So that's really about it when it comes down to Jet Boots. I still highly, highly recommend if you want to play Jet Boots only. I mean, it's not a bad thing. I played Soaring, Blade, or Soaring Blades only for a very, very, very long time. But playing both weapons together just really, really shows off how strong Balancer can actually be. You have, a, you have answers to so many, so many things. Um, granted, you do have to play and you have to be... L, you have to be um, conscious of more than one weapon. And you do have to be willing to work around with keybinds and things of that sort. But uh, I think if you really put the time in, you can end up doing massive amounts of damage with Bouncer and clearing content much faster than you actually think you might. Well, anyway, I can ramble on forever, as you guys already know, watching these videos. I'm um, just going to make a couple quick comments. Um, I will be looking to stream probably on Sunday is what we're looking at. Um, I feel like someone followed during this video that you guys are probably going to see. Oh, no, we turned off the alerts. Okay, cool, cool. Um, I just wanted to make sure. But anyway, so I will be streaming on Sunday um, at the time this video goes live. Same week, so probably, I think this will go live on Saturday morning. Um, so I'll be live probably Sunday when I get up in the morning since my day off from work and be streaming. We're going to be looking at pretty much jumping into one of the classes. I'll let the stream decide more than likely what we're going to be doing. And uh, we'll have to probably make a mag for it if it's not a class that I have a mag for already. Meaning all that money that you guys are like, oh, you have so much money, all that's going to go down. 
We'll need weapons. We'll need a lot of different things to test them out properly. So that'll go down that way. Anyway, if you guys like the video, toss a like. It's super helpful. I know it's kind of cringe, but it does help the algorithm. It makes feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside and absolve you of half or absolves you of half of your ad block guilt. The other half is subscribing, keeps up with the content, and again, helps me out a huge amount. Comment if you have any questions. I will do my best to get to them as soon as I can, or you comment heroes out there that have other answers. Feel free to jump in at any point in time. I'll do my best to back you guys up if I see it, and I agree. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me, and I'll take care. Or thanks for joining me. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.